Hey guys, how's it going? Max Scoville here for Destructoid, and I'm with Nathan Vella of Cappy Games, and we are here at GDC 2014. Again. Yeah, you've got a, you've got a big role this year. I do. I'm super excited to be hosting the IGF Awards this year. It's going to be a little crazy and super fun. I, I'm super excited to be handing out awards to my friends, hopefully. You're like I, Ellen DeGeneres of, of indie games, yeah. It is. Is that, like, is that tricky? Because, I mean, the indie game community is obviously very, very tight-knit, yeah. uh, and you know all these people in there. I mean, you hang out with them and stuff. Is it... Is that difficult to deal with? Is it scary? Well, the good thing is, is that the IGF, I think, has hit a point where it really is, in a lot of cases, the like the pinnacle of, of a lot of independent games. Like, there's, you can't pick winners and feel like someone else didn't deserve to win as well. I'm just really excited that so many people submit games to it, and that like it, it is a big. I mean, there's a there's a lot of discussion about what the IGF really is, like who is it for, what does it matter to people. Um, but I think the fact that you know hundreds and hundreds, like eight hundred people yeah. are submitting, that that means that it matters. That's a lot. that's a record. It was what was it the year before? Do you know? Six hundred. Six hundred. So. so it's it's pretty exponentially. It's that's yeah, a it's, that's a I big mean, growth. And I think that matches the growth in the independent development community as well. Yeah, and at the same time, the uh, possibilities of publishing are are getting much easier. Um, Everybody's fighting over being the easiest right now. Yeah. That's, that's an amazing thing compared to, I mean, three years ago that wasn't the case. Yeah. And we, our industry moves fast and people make a lot of rad shit very quickly and mm -hmm. people have to adapt. And we're adapting to what players want to play. It's not, it's not this kind of like, you know, big bureaucratic backhanded. It's like if people see that players want to play different things. Uh, platforms are going to give it to us. Now, Sony came out out the gate just being like, indie, 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 indie. And then um, Microsoft was a little bit more on the AAA side of things. I was surprised uh, Cappy with Below is yep. really kind of the uh, the one indie game spearheading on the Xbox One. We were really lucky to have them kind of you know grab our game and toss it up on stage at E3 and, and let us show something really different to have Phil Spencer talking about roguelikes at an E3 press conference is kind of amazing. I mean, it's kind of different. And it was great for us. We were really glad that we had that opportunity to reveal our crazy, insane game that way. That's pretty nuts. I, I know that it is a roguelike, procedurally generated. It looks beautiful. Is there anything else to kind of explain that? I mean, we've seen, seen very little so far. Yeah, so. and we'll be talking a lot about it very soon, actually. Um, it's, it's a game about survival. It's a game about exploration. It's a game about secrets. The way we kind of look at it is you're, it's, it's like you're inside a, uh, almost like a living terrarium. The paths you take through the depths uh, below, it's, it's you playing this tiny character with a really, it's a nimble character, but he's a weak character. Mm. And you're always kind of one false move away from death. Um, but it's kind of every life matters in the world. If you die and come back, and you're coming back after the last life. Um, and so you can actually kind of, anything that you did in that past life actually impacts the world. Uh, open a door, that door is now open. Huh. Um, so it, it, it's, it's a crazy thing. And it's a, it's a really big game, really combat focused game, but very super hard, super challenging. Uh, it's not going to be a game that you beat your first try. Mm. Uh, it's going to be very challenging and it's going to require players to get really good at it. Well, being. people are pretty pretty into that. Dark Souls 2, I think, is a pretty good indication. Yeah. Uh, do you have a ETA for that, for Below? Uh, we, we're not really sure, Okay. to be totally honest. When you're it's, done? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to get it to people as, as quickly as we can. We want to we definitely want to have it in players' hands as soon as we can, but yeah. uh, we're, we're not one to put games out rushedly. That's a good way to go uh, about it. Uh, but however, in the in the more short term, you've got Super Time Force on the way. Yes. Do we have an ETA for that? We're hoping, uh, it, it's looking like May, June. Okay. Um, kind of, it's in QA right now, and it's really hard to lock down release dates when you're still getting tested, and you have to go through certification, and all those weird developer insider things that players uh, don't really see very much, but it's, uh, we've got all the levels in there, all the characters in there. It's no, amazing so to play the game. Sorry. Last time I saw that, there were like four characters. You, it'd be the kind of three basic ones, and then you meet Jeff Leopard. Yep. And then there was, uh, was it Kawa... Ka Ka Zachasaurus. Zachasaurus, yeah, who said his catchphrase is... Kookabunga. Kookabunga, that's it. Kookabunga! <laughs> now, you, you name-dropped a few other guys who are in the game now. Yeah, there's... Uh, the full version of the game uh, has 16 different playable characters. Everything from Zachasaurus, who's a skateboard riding, sunglass wearing, mohawk adorned, uh, rude crew dino dude. Wow. Um, to Dolphin Lundgren. Dolphin who Lundgren. Is, uh, dolphin with a giant heavy machine gun. 
Uh, you can play as a playable piece of crap named Squirty Harry. Wow. Um, wow. That's we're really running, gross. We're running the gamut of stupid jokes, pretty much. That's incredible. Uh, and how many how many levels? How big is the game? Uh, you get to go through six different time periods from like the present, which is 1980X, to like the far off future, to the post apocalypse, to medieval times. You get to try to save Atlantis, uh, and you get to fight dinosaurs, obviously. Well, fight dinosaurs to save dinosaurs. I love that you guys go from like, you know, sword and sorcery, which is like this just like really serene, whimsical thing, to like the loudest, neonest, most 90s radical shit, and then kind of back to something sort of serene and mysterious well, again. Yeah. That's what we do. We, we've yeah. never really made sequels, we've never really done a game this similar as the last, and we're, it's, we really believe that if we make stuff that we like to make, that that will be visible and palpable to players, that they'll actually know that we like and that's why, like, Time Force, a huge part of it is just dumb, happy jokes. Yeah. They have references to 80s and 90s flicks that we love, like, references to games that we love, but are done in a way where, like, super time travel focused and it trying works. to bring something different to the run and gun genre. It's something kind of like, it's a really design heavy video game, but that's hidden underneath really rad pixel art and amazing music by our friend 6955. And, like it's it's amazing for us to be able to work on those two projects simultaneously and yeah. see the cross pollination of like super serious aesthetic, uh, punishing uh, survival game, and then a game that's about exploding robots and playing as a dinosaur. There's there's an interesting kind of juxtaposition there because with, with a you know with a roguelike it's sort of like you, you do have to accept the fact you're going to die at some point and you're going to kind of have to take that in stride. Whereas Super Time Force dying is kind of the the key mechanic. It's gameplay. Do you find that like something that maybe didn't quite stick with uh, with one game carries over well into the other one? Yeah, I think. I mean, I think that for both of the games, there is there's not a lot of those like really gross threads, but there's threads that are like uh, both of them are really challenging games, and they're meant to be very. We're not going to hold a player's hand. We're not going to you know baby them through. We're you're really going to have to work at getting good at those games, and I believe that challenging games can be super fun. And I love the audience that plays super challenging games. And so well, those, both of those games are really tough. What is uh, Super Time Force coming out for? Because it's, it's coming uh, out on Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Uh, if all goes well simultaneously, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a, a crazy little game on, on both of those platforms. Are we going to see a PC release at any point? Um, I'm, I'm not going to say yes, and I'm not going to say no. Okay. We're, well, that's, we're, uh, fo we're focused squarely on our console homeboys right now. Well, there's just one more notch mark for me to go out and want to buy an Xbox One. You, you just have to. Yeah, it's, there's some big robots. I mean, look at Mr. Indie Man here, you could, with your the triple A of loud robot games with the guns uh, and, we, us, and the jumping. Us robot game makers gotta stick together. That's yeah. what I said. Well, Nathan, thank you so much for chatting. I wish you the best of GDCs. Thank you very Good much. It's gonna be a really fun one. Lots of crazy games, lots of crazy awards, yeah. lots of crazy fun, I hope. Yeah. Stay tuned. This channel right here, we're putting up more videos about GDC and head to destructoid.com for lots of write-ups about things that are happening. See you guys around. Not a lot of those like really gross threads. Not a lot of those like really gross threads.